Hello, welcome to Board Game Base Coats, and today we are unboxing Targi. Now, uh, Targi's been out for a while, and I have played it before, um, but never owned my own copy. Uh, I always played uh, copies belonging to friends, or copies at uh, conventions, or um, cafes. Um, but with me moving to Japan, yes, it was uh, past time for me to pick this one up. Actually, I thought to delay uh, this unboxing. Um, I did have ordered the expansion, uh, but it hasn't arrived yet. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right in and see what we've got here. So first off are the rules. Now this comes in a fold-out rules sheet. Uh, very functional. Uh, that said, I do prefer rule books um, over rule sheets. Uh, but that said, uh, the rules here are very clear and concise. Um, this is a very easy game to teach. So um, yeah, it really does did not need a lot. So um, very functional. Moving on are the tokens. And yes, uh, two sheets, two sheets of tokens here, not that many. Uh, first off, the first player token there. All right, and let's flip that over and get at that gold. All right, so gold is uh, just one of the currencies in the game. Uh, there aren't a lot of pieces here, so uh, I guess fitting the desert theme, there's just not that many resources already. And I do appreciate, see how everything just kind of falls apart nice and easy. So punching uh, tokens is very therapeutic, um, but only if they punch out easily. <laughs> now here I'm punching out the victory point tokens. Uh, these come in values of 1, uh, 3, and 5. And here is the salts. Now as you can see here, um, just as a, little, as a little side note, I really do like it when tokens are arranged in this way. Um, because if it is therapeutic to punch them out, like right here, oh yeah, free of the sprue and separating them. That's great. And you can imagine the amount of excitement as I see there's more of it, so we'll save that for last. Now as for these victory point tokens, they come in three points there, right there, three. Um, five points right there, or earlier, punched out, and uh, here's one point. So um, they're the same size and shape, and uh, from a distance you can't really tell uh, how many points they're worth. Um, so a little bit of not-so-secret information, but there aren't too many of them. Usually I'm annoyed when tokens are too similar, um, but in this case it really doesn't matter that much. And ah, uh, here we are, this big block of sprueless tokens. So as you can see, I'm uh, trying to punch it out from the sides so I can enjoy maximum <laughs> uh, token time with them. And ah, uh, they're falling apart just a little bit too easily, but that's okay. Um, and as you can see, the art of the game, um, a lot of repeat art, um, and it's very simple, but it's very clear. So as symbology goes, I think uh, the tokens uh, do a really good job uh, for the game. Alrighty, and with the last of those done, great, so let's go ahead and jump right in to the rest here. We've got tribe figures, uh, tribe markers, and that gray token right there, uh, that is the uh, raider. Or the thief? Thief, yes. Alright, so what you do is you set your uh, meeple people and you set them around uh, borders and then you'll take those round cylinders and cross. And here, ah, uh, another small pleasure. Pull tabs that work. There we go. Take note, y'all. Alright, so uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the art on the tokens, uh, the art on the cards themselves are very simple. Um, nothing too crazy here, a lot of repeat art. Um, but um, it comes off very clean and looks really attractive on the table. So um, I have no real uh, complaints here. So all I'm doing here is separating the cards. There are three types. There are the border cards, which I set aside. Here are the tribe cards, quite a few of them. And finally, there are the goods cards. There we are. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and check out the... Uh, goods cards first. Um, so when you get um, your markers crossed, um, you can pick up basically these goods, and they are uh, any of the trade goods or gold or victory points. Um, and here are the tribe cards. So these, along with the good cards, are placed um, alternating um, within the border. 
uh, that you'll make this sort of border frame. Now again, the art here is repeated, but it's really not that big of a deal. So as you're playing the game, you really don't get a feel for like, oh, I've seen this art. No, you really are focusing on what you need to do, which is get resources, trade them in, get your victory points. Um, as you can see here, um, in the top are the row to purchase the tribe card, and in the bottom are the victory points. And as you can see, some of these tribe cards have lots and lots of text, uh, some have none. All right, so initially uh, you might think, wow, you know, that might be kind of confusing. But as you're playing the game, no, it really is not. So actually, um, uh, the game, again, plays very cleanly. And we are getting to, oops, there, uh, getting to the last of these already. Yes. Okay, great. Nice. All right. So uh, that takes care of those tribe cards, um, which should basically work out as player powers. And as you can see, there's about mm, two or three times more tribe cards as there are goods cards. Now then, these border cards. So uh, this will make like a frame. And as you can see in the top left are numbers there. And these are laid out in sequential orders. Uh, you can see there are a raid card. Uh, the raids are in the corners, so when those happen, basically everybody loses stuff. All right. Um, initially, when I first played the game, you know, modularity is always on my mind, um, and especially in this case, you know, why not have it, you know, mixed? Um, even if you had the rule that said, well, the raids have to be in the corner. Um, I thought it was initially kind of odd that um, you couldn't randomize the rest. Um, now what I'm looking at here, so um, on one side of these cards is, uh, well could be, a lot of text like that you see there, but on the other side will be just a symbol or some basically languageless um, information. Um, so after you've played the game a while, um, you very quickly pick up what each of these cards does. Now as I was saying about the randomization, um, I'm sure you know the game is designed very specifically so that you know certain abilities are a uh, certain distance away from other abilities and perhaps that's why they're not randomized at all but uh, just real quick here as I put the cards away um, this insert yeah I will be getting rid of this I mean it, it fits the components here just fine but um, as you can see the cards look a bit snug in there um, and I do sleeve all my cards so yeah this this uh, insert won't work and uh, as I say, um, I have ordered the expansion, and uh, I'm sure I'd need the extra space anyway, uh, just to keep it in here. Um, I will be, of course, organizing these components just a little bit better, uh, but for now, uh, this will uh, serve. All right, so uh, that wraps up another one of these. So uh, again, I'm really happy to finally have my own copy of Targi. Um, if you do not have it, I do recommend it, and that will wrap up another unboxing. So, thanks very much. Bye.